Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Let's create something fun today, such as this tensile pavilion structure. As you can see, I have made it here in Revit, and the main point is to demonstrate how you can create this adaptive tensile panel family. It's really flexible. If I now isolate it, and then go to Edit Type, you have parameters for changing different dimensions, such as End Offset, this one over here. Similarly, you can change the side offset as well. If I want to go for a smaller number, it's going to change this one there. And of course, the overall depth of the panel, you can change from here as well. If I want it to be a bit more shallow, it will look more flat, just like that, as you can see over here as well. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now, because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's get started. I will now close everything down. And let's go and make a new adaptive components family. Just go to find new family. And then choose this template here. Genetic model adaptive. We cannot start creating the family for our tensile panel. Let's start with placing three points. And then select them and then make them into adaptive points. I can now start connecting them in pairs, so 1 connect to 2, 2 connect to 3, and 3 connects back to 1. These 3 lines now, I can select them and make them reference lines. Next step, we need to create 3 middle points. So I go to here, placing point on face, first middle point, second middle point, and a third middle point there. Make sure they are properly hosted. If I now try to move this point, for example, those two should update. And similarly, if I move this one now, this point should follow as well. We cannot start connecting them. Let me get those two now and connect them like this. In a similar way, let's connect this point to point number two there. As always, all the lines we create so far should be reference lines. Moving on, we need to now create some more points that will guide the boundary of our tensile panel. Let's go back to here now. Drop one here, drop one there, and then another one right here. We now want to control the distance between, for example, this point here to this other one there. To do this, we need to select the internal point. Go to Properties, check out this Normalize Curve parameter. It is now a parameter in the range of 0 to 1. Let's now change this to segment length. And you can see now it's showing a value of 300. If I now change this to maybe 500, you can see straight away that 300 is the measurement from here to there between those two points. We can now turn this into a parameter. Let's call this one side offset and make it type. Let's do the same over here. This one here, let's change this as well to segment length. And you can see now, this value is much bigger because this segment length is now measured from this other point to this point. We don't want that, we want this to be measured from here to this other point on the right which is closer to it. To do that, I need to change this measure from parameter to end. And now that's more like it. We can now hook this up to the same side offset parameter. And that's done it. I can now do the same thing for this other point here. Make sure this is segment length and that's an acceptable value. However, instead of using side offset, I want to control this one independently. So let's call this new one end offset. Make a type parameter as well and do OK. So far so good, but until now our panel is just flat. Let's give it some thickness. I can now drop in here on this line another point. We want this point to be where this line intersects with this other one. Let's do so by selecting it like this and do host point by intersection. I can then click on this line here and now it will always be there. If I now try to move this point for example, you can see the whole system is updating nicely. Next step, we need to host on these points, all these four internal ones, a further set of four points on top of each one. So let's go to here now. This time I'm placing points on work plan, and for the first work plan, let's set it 
to be this horizontal plane right there. Press tab a few times until you see this highlighted up and click it to select. I can now place this new point right on top of this other one. Ignore this warning for now and let's do the same four more times. Okay, I have now four points sitting on top of another four. Let's bring the latest points up. I can select this first one there and just drag it down like this. Do the same for the other points. Now, if you look closely, this point, it should be the lowest point among them all because this is where the curvature of the panel gets most extreme. I can now give this offset parameter a name like depth and do OK. These other two points along its side, they can have a slightly smaller depth value. Let's call this one Side Depth and click OK. I want to, however, control this Side Depth parameter automatically. Let's go to Family Types now. Copy this parameter name. Go to Side Depth. And let's say I want this to be the total depth divided by 2. Here we go. If I now drag this point down, you can see the other two also follows. This other point over here can actually use the same parameter. So we can use here as well, side depth. Very nice. We can now start creating the geometry of our panel. Let's connect a few points here. I will get these three now and make an arc between them like that. We can do the same here for this other point but this time it's connecting to point 3 and point 1 in the same way as well. If I now try to make a form between those two lines, it's not very really exciting. Instead, we need to here now create another line at the end near point number 2. If I zoom way into here, I can suddenly draw two new points over there. Make sure we're drawing them on face. And let's do one here, one there. When I select these two, I can also turn their measurement type to segment length. Now this one, the segment length of it is very high and that's because this is measured to the other endpoint on the left hand side. We can now change this again to end and that's a more reasonable value. This one however, we have to do the same one again and now that's better. These two I can give them the same parameter now for segment length. End offset is going to be, oh, I've used that already. How about terminal offset? Okay. And this offset value for the terminal points, it doesn't have to be so high. I can just put in here maybe 10 mil. Because all those two points do for us is to help us create this line. I can turn this into a reference line as well along with the other two arcs here and here. When I have them all selected, all three of them, I can finally do great form. And that's the geometry of our panel. We can now save this as cell. To place this easier in the project, I also have to now select these three points and change their orientation to global XYZ. Next step, I can select this panel here and give it a parameter to control its material later on. Let's call this one cell as well. And the last step here in this family is to create the perimeter elements of this panel. I can now hide this panel just for a minute. Hide element. And let's create the first boundary along this curve. Let's do point on face and drop one point here, one point there. We want to have essentially one new point on each side of this arc. I can now go back to reference circle. This time drawing this on a plane and set the work plane to be firstly here. I can now draw the first circle like that and then make this radius dimension permanent. Let's do the same one more time on this other point here. Before I move on, let's try to see if everything is still flexing properly. Yes, it does. I cannot do this two more times for these other two boundaries of this panel. 
Now you may be tempted to create a second arc here and a third arc there, just so you can host these two circles in the same way along these two new arcs. But that's actually unnecessary. I can just reset the view now. Go to point on face again and place new points directly on this boundary of the panel that is already there. So one, two, three, four. And then I can go ahead and draw my new reference circle just like before. So the first one plan will be here. If I now try to move this point, for example, you can see that new circle that I host on the panel itself still updates nicely. Looking good, I can now draw three more circles like this. Here we go. It's time now to get all those radial dimensions. I will select one of them here, select all in the view. And we can turn this into a new parameter, simply call this R for now. Next step, I can start creating the boundary elements. Let's get this reference arc here and these two circles there. I can now do grid form and turn on shaded mode. That's a huge boundary element, but I'll fix that in a minute. For now, it's important for me to tap select this point there and then change this normalized curve parameter to one. Now we'll move it all the way to the end where point number one is. Switching to the other side, I can now tap select this point here as well. But instead of one, let's change this now to zero. And I will move it to the other end point. Let's do the same for this boundary here. I can now tap select the edge of the panel here and control select those two circles. Do great form again. Get this point, change this to one. And for the other end, we can now set this point here to be at zero. Don't worry about identical points, warnings like this. This is totally on purpose. Let's do the same for this third boundary. Here we go. And while I'm here, I can now select these three boundary elements and give them a material parameter as well. It's time to make it more realistic. I can go to family types now and change this radius to something smaller, maybe 10. Let's see. Here we go. I made them bigger just so we could work on them easier, but now comes the real dimension. All right, it's time now to test this family in the project. Let me first switch to the project now, and I will quickly just delete all the cells that we have already in here. Just so we can place them again fresh. Now, of course, we need to place in here the structural columns, structural beams, and some walls here, just to have the same context we have in this reference image. But these are more basic graphic skills, so I'll leave them for another video. For now, let's focus on placing this family into here. So I will go back to this family now and load this into the project. We can now place it using three points. Let's go to component. And how about the first one here? As you can see, those points, they snap to anything in the model, really flexible. I can now go one, two, and get the last point there on top, snapping to this circle there. Here we go. First one is in now. And as you can see, I made a mistake, but that's easy to fix thanks to our flexible family. Let's just quickly isolate these two elements there and then we can try to tap select this point here and do pick new host I can now freely go to here and pick on this column right there and now it's hosted properly if I'm not happy with the curvature of the family I can go to here select it go to edit type and maybe increase this depth to something bigger let's try 750 and it should get deeper as well, as you can see there. Likewise, if I want this arc to be more curved, 
simply go to end offset and increase this value as well. Well, that actually changed the wrong side of the panel. It changed this side because of the order we placed our panel. Remember in the family, if we go back to here, the end side was between point 0.1 and point 0.2. If I go back to here now, point 0.1 is somewhere over here and point 0.2 is there. That's why this is considered the end side of the panel. Doesn't matter that much. I can still go to edit type. And for this arc to be changed, I can now change this parameter instead, side offset. Can now also be bigger as well. And that did it. All right. You can continue placing this panel all around to get the same thing I had at the beginning. Just one small detail to finish off this design. You can see here, there are cables connecting different points along your columns and beams. That's another thing we can quickly create. Just go back to here, choose new family, and get the same template, generic model adaptive. For this cable, you can make it as complex as you like, but for a project at this stage, it's enough to just create a line between those two adaptive points. So let's do this right there and save this as cable. I can now load this back into the project. And with this one, it's super easy to place. I can just go to here now, connect this end point of this beam to maybe this point up here. Similarly, I can go and make this other beam here, connect it to this cable to there. You can see, super easy. Keep doing that for the tensile panel and your cables, and then eventually, you will get to the same design we had at the beginning. Alright, if you enjoyed this lesson and want more like this coming every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, practice creating these tensile panels, and I'll see you in the next lesson.